<clears throat> Hi everyone, good evening. I'm sorry I'm running very late. Um, I just, yeah, I only came uh, back home very late last night and I really don't know what day it is uh, at this point. I really was convinced it's Wednesday today. Suddenly just realized it's Thursday. So very late evening prayer, but still it's happening. So hopefully you guys will be able to see it. Um, I didn't do any proofreading or <laughs> anything today because it just literally realized. So uh, you will excuse my reading if it, if it sounds off. All right, let's begin. Hopefully you had a lovely day, everyone. And uh, another wonderful and lovely and warm day here. <clears throat> we begin Thursday, 23rd of June. Oh God, make speed to save, <coughs> to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of, uh, of day and night. To you be praised and glory forever. As darkness falls and glory, oh, sorry, as darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, you, your living uh, word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Glory to the Father, Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We are reading Psalm 39. I said, I will keep watch over my ways so that I offend not with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a mus muzzle, with the wicked are in my sight. Sorry, can you, Noah, can you tell them I'm doing a video, please? <laughs> Sorry, my kids are going wild. Uh, really uh, gets me distracted. I will guard my mouth with a whistle, uh, uh, sorry, muzzle, uh, while the wicked are in my sight. So I held my tongue and I said nothing. I kept silent, but n to no avail. My distress increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I mused, the fire was kindled and I spoke out with my tongue. Lord, let me know my end. <laughs> <clears throat> and the number of my days, that I may know how short my time is. You have made my days but a hand, hand's breadth, and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Surely even those who stand upright are but a breath. We walk about like a shadow, and in vain we are in to turmoil. We heap in riches and cannot tell who will gather them. And now, what is hope? Truly, my hope is even with, is even in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions, and do not make me the taunt of, of the fool. I fell silent and did not open my mouth, for surely it was your doing. Take away your plague from me. I am consumed by the blows of your hand. With, re with rebukes for sin, you punish me like a mouth like a moth you consume our beauty truly everyone is but a bread hear my prayer O lord and give ear to my cry hold not your peace at my tears for i am but a stranger with you a wayfarer fairer uh, as all my forebearers were turn your gaze from me that i may be glad again before i go my way and I am no more. All right, Psalm 39. Let's uh, read the reflection. The shortness of life, the frailty of this transient existence. Psalm 39 reminds us of 
the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, in its sober reminder of the frightful bravery of life in this world, from about age of age 30 on, our bodies are powering down. Wow, we are dying. As, G as James put it, you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. That's James 4, 14. This is a key theme of this solemn psalm. What then? Are we to throw up our hands and give up on life? By no means. Rather, we are to, to, to pray, O oh Lord, make me now mount my end. Sorry. O oh Lord, make me now my end, and what is the measure of my days? We are not to give way to sin, cynicism or hopelessness. We are to be sober-minded, considering the shortness of life. We are to acknowledge our sinfulness and recognize that when we plan our hopes in the things of the world, God will, discip God will discipline us and bring bitter disappointment regarding that <coughs> adultery. Don't put your, basically, don't put your um, uh, faith in other things, but God. We, he will consume like a moth what is dear to him. Why does the Lord do this? Why is his hand so heavy upon us at times? At times, because he loves us too much to allow us to follow our natural inclinations to build our joy on the sandy foundation of the things of the earth, even good things like health or money or uh, vacations or family or education or work. He insisted our final hope rests on him. Only then will we be spared unlimited disappointment. For God is the one hope, sorry, for God is the one hope uh, of this life who will not in the end let us down. Amen. Amen. That's it. It's, uh, it's true. It's true. God is the only one who knows our lives before we are even born. He knows our lives before, after. He, he can see the future. He can see what will happen to us. So um, we should put our trust only onto him. Amen. All right. Second, uh, Second Chronicles 35, 119. Second Chronicles 35, 119. Josiah kept a Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem. They slaughtered the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the first month. He appointed the priest to their offices and encouraged them in, uh, encouraged them in the <clears throat> service of the house of the Lord. He said to the Le Levites who taught all Israel and who were holy to the Lord, put the holy ark in the house of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, built. You need no longer carry it on your shoulders now serve the lord your god in his people and his people israel make preparations by your um, ancestral house by your divisions following the written directions of king david of israel and the written directions of his uh, son solomon take position in the holy place according to the grouping of the ancestral houses on your king kindred the people and let <clears throat> there be Levites for each division uh, of an ancestral house. Slaughter the Passover lambs, san uh, sanctify yourselves, and on behalf of your kindred, make preparations acting according to the word of the Lord by Moses. Then Josiah contributed to the people as Passover offering for all that were present, lambs and kids from the flock, from the flock to the number of 30,000 and their thousand bulls. These were from the king's possessions. He, uh, his officials contrib contributed willingly to the people, to the priests and to the Levites. Hugh, sorry, Hugh, Kia, Zechariah, and Jehiel, Jehiel, yep, 
it would have been useful if I read these names before. And J J J Hill J J Hill. Hmm. The chief officers of the house of God gave to the priests for the Passover offerings two thousand six hundred lambs and kids and three hundred bulls. Conan, uh, Conania also and his brothers Shemia and Netanel and Hashibai Han Cheo and Josabat. I have no idea if any of those is pronounced correctly by me. <laughs> the chief of the Levites gave to the Levites for the Passover offering 5,000 lambs and kids and 500 bulls. When the service had been prepared for the priests, stood in the place and the Levites in their divisions according to the king's commands, they slaughtered the Passover lamb and the priests gushed the blood that they received from them while the Levites did the skinning. They set aside the burnt offering and so that they might distribute them accordingly so to the grouping of the ancestral houses of the people to offer to the Lord as it is written, written in the book of Moses and they did the same with the bulls. <clears throat> they roasted the Passover lamb with fire according to the ordinance and they boiled the holy offering in the pots, in cauldrons and, uh, and in pans and carried them quickly to the people. Afterwards, they made preparations for themselves and for the priests because the priests and descendants of Aaron were occupied in offering the burning offering and the fat parts until night. So the Levites made preparations for themselves and for the priests and the descendants of Aaron. The, the singers, the descendants of Isaph were in their place according to the commands of David and Asaph and Haman and King Seir Jedu, Jedutun. The gatekeepers were at each gate. They did not need to interrupt their service for the kin kindred and Levites made preparations for them. So they all, so, uh, so they all, uh, so all the service of the Lord was prepared th that day. So all the service was prepared that day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings in the altar in the Lord according to the command of King Josiah. The people of Israel who were present kept the Passover at time and the festival of un unleavened bread for seven days. No Passover like it had been kept in Israel since the days of the prophet Samuel. None of the kings of Israel had kept a such Passover in sorry as was kept in Josiah by Josiah, by the priests and the Levites, by all Judah and Israel who were present, and by the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the 18th year of the reign of Josiah, this Passover was kept. All right, interesting. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Basically, everything runs on a tight schedule. Everybody <laughs> knows what they're doing. Um, they're doing what they're supposed to do, different houses, different, different groupings, um, preparing lambs. Um, Josiah himself provided 30,000 lambs, 30,000 lambs and goats, plus 3,000 cattle for Passover uh, celebration. So that, that's quite a lot. Think about it, 30,000, that's a lot of animals there their Passover celebrations. The Levites made preparations for themselves and for the Aaronic priests and also they made it for the gatekeepers so and they all celebrated for seven days. And that's the typical celebration of Passover for seven days and again we see the need to be generous here um, and also to be able to relax into celebrating. They were celebrating, they were singing, the people were full of joy um, as we need to be able to be. I, I discovered this in the last few days, in the last week when uh, it's been absolutely crazy running around, traveling and, and it's just too much. Just sometimes it's a lot. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it could be a lot in any time of our lives and um, 
kids, work, school, everything. Uh, but we need to be able to stop. We need to be able when it's time to stop and and celebrate and 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 sing and praise God. Um, so they were happy and, 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 and prosperous in their lives. You can see they had so much to offer. They were prosperous. In their lives, they had all that they needed. And that is why they were able to give to others. So unless you have enough for yourself and a bit on top, you're not going to be able to give to others. You? you have to be prosperous. You have to have something in order to give away. And I'm not talking about, I'm just talking about in terms of finances here, you, you know, financial stuff. Um, they had a lot of animals to prepare and give away. Um, we need to give with a generous heart. That's a, that's an important thing. Um, no matter how much or how little, you can give very little or a lot. It, it doesn't matter as long as it's from the heart. It counts. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, if if it doesn't come from the heart, better don't do it. And, yeah, just give as much as you feel you can give feeling happy generously and then obviously that train yourself <laughs> uh, we need to all train ourselves to be a bit more generous and give a bit more but it, of course it, according to your situation it's yeah um because god sees our hearts that's the most important thing god will see your heart and your intentions and why do you give you know give to bless somebody give as much as you can give happily and work towards being more generous um, and i believe we will become more blessed this way all right we're moving on next reading is um hold on i lost my way there's a reading romans 8 12 to 17 romans 8 12 to 17 so then brothers and sisters we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for it you will, for you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put <coughs> to death the deeds of the body you will live live not live live <coughs> for all who are led by the spirit of god are children of god for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with all spirit and we, and uh, spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then hairs, hairs of God and joined hairs with Christ. In, if in fact we are suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him hallelujah adoption adoption requires sacrifices yeah adoption requires sacrifices and for god he, he required the ultimate sacrifice to to adopt us um, the debt has been paid and we are no longer slaves to sin or slaves to fear. We become heirs to God and we have a new close relationship with our Father. And that relationship is stronger than anything and it's in his permanent relationship. You can't break this relationship. We are to call him Abba, Father, uh, which means Daddy, not Father, not dad, Daddy. It's the nicest the most the nicest way you can call your dad daddy we are to call him daddy the way that paul is describing this relationship is just um on another level this the spirit is the one who is transforming us being part of the family of god it isn't just about what we can get um but it's also about changing who we are and um yeah like i said we are no longer slaves to fear we are children of God. We have the Spirit of God. We are led and changed by the Spirit, but only when we allow the Spirit to change us. Um, because He is a very gentle Spirit. He's not going to impose. Uh, he's not going to do anything um, that we don't want uh, or allow. He's gonna, we need to be willing to change. Amen. All right, we read the Magnificat. 
You have left all things and followed me. You will be rewarded hundred times over and gain eternal life. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has, gone, has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud and the, in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. <coughs> he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of servant of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Amen. Glory to the Father, Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen all right uh, and now we pray together god um oh god thank you for this day thank you for this beautiful day that we all um are able to see and experience um thank you for your Thank you for one minute. Thank you for your love and care for us. Thank you for guiding us and keeping us safe every day of our lives. Um, thank you for our successful trip and bringing us home. We pray for everybody uh, who, in any kind of situation, everybody who is traveling, everybody who is might be unwell, everybody who's just going through any kind of challenge, financial, physical emotional any kind of challenge we pray for all these people be with them uh, hold their hand be with them and and look after them and, and make sure they know that you're there with with them they're never alone um we we bless reverend henry and his son today um nathaniel who they built they both have birthdays um, we bless them in your name. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for, for the calling uh, on their lives. Thank you for their service. And um, we love them. We bless them. We pray for your blessings and guidance over their lives and um, for the whole family. Uh, thank you for looking after them and holding them always. Um, we uh, pray for the ongoing issues around the world. We pray for these people who are stuck in those issues, in those places of war and um, hunger and, and um, disasters, natural disasters. All these people who need you, be there for them, God, and, and make sure that there's others who are there for them. Use the people to help them. <clears throat> Thank you for this. Um, all your gifts thank you for all your gifts jesus thank you for your love and even for the bees <laughs> um we love you jesus um bless us and give us a good night's sleep um and help us wake up refreshed and ready for the new day in the jesus name we pray amen uh, and we say together the lord's prayer our father in heaven Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right.
Hallelujah. Bless you everyone. Have a good evening and good night's sleep and see you all on Sunday.